Just in case you missed it, it's the top five sports talkers of the day. Now, it's time for Dan Barrero's Top 5 at 5. Brought to you by Gutter Helmet of Minnesota. Never clean your gutters again. Learn more at GutterHelmetMN.com. Look at all the time you have to really drill down and nuance the Top 5 at 5 today. Extra time. I, yeah. I just handed it to you. And you I gifted know, it to me. Yeah, and you're... I'm not sure you're ready for it, to be honest with you. Well, what better day than July 10th with all this stuff going on in the sports world to stretch out and have extra time? (laughs) I can't think of a better day. No. The only day better is whenever the day after the MLB All-Star game is. Whenever that is. That's the only other day, which is like a week away, I think, because the All-Star game is coming up. The All-Star break is coming up. But we will start with football. We won't start with hockey. Because if Kevin Faulness can't make it to prospect camp, I don't know what to tell you. It must not be that important. So we will start with football. Would you like Justin Jefferson or Kevin O'Connell first? JJ. JJ was on the Rich Eisen show today. He was promoting the fact that his Netflix show, Receiver, officially dropped today. He's in it. The show that he's on. You make it sound like it's a JJ production. You're like the texters that told us there was an original meaning for raw dogging. I got it. Devontae Adams is in it. George Kittle is in it. Debo Samuel is in it. Amon way, Ross St. Well, Brown is in it. Speaking of that, based on the reviews I've read of it, of people who've already seen it, yep, they say we're heavily in, JJ's in it heavy early, and then he kind of fades. Oh, really? And down the stretch, we're not a factor. Anyway. Well, think of the season last well, year. That, yeah. And JJ was hurt for a long time. That's true. So I'm sure the injury, I think in the, the episodes that, well, they're all out, but I know his injury is heavily chronicled, obviously. So it drops today. It, of course, is just like quarterback. A year ago at this time, we were losing ourselves in Kirk Cousins' eyes. Kirk Cousins is no longer here. He's a member of the Atlanta Falcons, as is Michael Penix, much to Kirk Cousins' chagrin. But uh, J.J. was in California today on the Rich Eisen Show, talked about a lot of stuff, including Sam Darnold and J.J. McCarthy. He gave the usual answers for that. You know, Sam's a veteran, knows how to talk to us. Good to have him. We're excited about J.J. But then Eisen hit him with this. Were you surprised Kirk left? Uh, Yeah and no. Um I always, I always knew, you know, Kirk, you know, was going to do whatever he needs to do for, for, you know, his business wise. Uh, and I, I just knew that, you know, everything just wasn't, um, you know, the way he wanted it to be uh, here. And uh, especially, you know, just with uh, having to pay me and, you know, having to play so many other different guys. Uh, I feel like he, he just wanted a new start, a new uh, opportunity to, you know, start with uh, Atlanta and uh, a clean slate, and uh, I'm not mad at him at all for that. Uh, I'm grateful for for what he has brought to me and uh, you know the things that we have accomplished together. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a business, and um, you know you got to do what you got to do for yourself and for your family, and uh, I, I clearly understand that. Uh, but you know, it's 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 on to the next. You know, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, what quarterback it is. In my eyes, uh, I'm always going to try to make the best of the opportunity. Uh, I'm always going to try to, you know, be the quarterback's friend uh, and, and make his job a lot easier. So uh, it doesn't matter if it was Kirk or uh, if it's Sam or if it's JJ. You know, I'm I'm going to make him. Um, you know. Make him make it as easy as possible for him. The headline for me there, Dan, is that he always knew that uh, they were never going to be able to pay Kirk the money that he wanted. Yeah, because they he wanted them to pay him the money he wanted. Exactly. And um, there wasn't going to be enough for everybody. How many playoff games did they win together? Together? I don't think they won any. He wasn't here. You're right. For the victory over the New Orleans, I don't right? think J.J. was here in 20-whatever year that was. The second year of Cousins. I'm pretty sure. Wow. They didn't get one playoff victory together. Someone can correct us, but just off the top of my head. No, I think you're right. I don't recall one. That's emotional. Boy, I can see where there'd be a devastating, you know, di- you know, divorce where, man, that's hard to take with everything we've, we've done together. Um, well, I translate what he said to mean, you know, Cousins wanted, obviously, the 
knew he wasn't going to get the deal that Atlanta gave him here. Um, and so he left to get that money. Pretty, it's, it's fairly simple in that regard, right? As, as we say, Friday nights on Fox 9, enough said. Yeah, I think so. You're exactly right. So the cool thing about these Netflix shows is that they're basically granted unfettered access to everything, which includes post-game locker rooms. And I like what um, tweeter that alerted me to this, Adam Patrick, said in his tweet. He's the editor for fan-sided coverage uh, for the Vikings at the Viking Age. He, his caption to this is, You've seen the post-game speeches where he gives out 17 game balls, but now we get to know what Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell <laughs> is like after his team loses. This after the Vikings lost the Thursday night game week two to the Philadelphia Eagles 34-28. Ooh, ooh. to We're 0-2. We've lost by a combined nine points, and we've lost the turnover battle 7-1. to When we talk about it's all about the ball, it's got to f***ing mean something to you. Everything inside you. That's just purely holding the organization in your hands and not caring enough. We've got the leadership in this room to fix it. And we're going to get this right. And we're going to start rolling like a freight train. You guys with me? Yes, sir. That's JJ, of course, mic'd up. Uh, The Vikings, for the record, in that game, fumbled four times and lost all four of them. Cousins had one. Brandon Powell had one. Alexander Madison, as we know, frequently early on in the season last year had one. And Justin Jefferson also Hmm. lost a fumble. I think that was the one where he was reaching for the end zone. Oh, that's right. That was the unfortunate one at the end of the half, I think, wasn't it? It was going to get us back in the game. And we never changed that rule, which we should have, as you know. (laughs) Because how could it be a touchback for the defense? They did nothing. But that's a little bit of KOC you know, unplugged. Yeah, I think you sensationalized it a little bit. I thought you might say Just that. Just a little bit. Now, uh, by his, by KOC standards, yeah, it was like, you know, pit bull. By Mike Zimmer standards, see, the Zimmer meltdown would never get to, and by the way, we got the people in this room to take care of it. He might. No, he wouldn't. Zimmer would be... Hold on to the bleeping ball, guys. I'm sick of telling you this. End of story. And then he'd walk out. But KOC being KOC, he had to make sure he still put a positive bow on it, even as he offered up an was an Effenheimer in there? And an S-bomb. And an S-bomb, too? Both of them in 27 seconds. Wow. By the way, I think they continued to fumble for like the next three weeks. Do we so get them on the perch uh, day one? Is that the part of the tradition? Do we think it's going to continue this year? Day one of training camp? I mean, we usually, nothing's been confirmed, okay. but I know it's been requested. You you like our chances? I usually do. Okay. Yeah. I usually do. All right. Um, where did I want to go next? So that was the Viking stuff. Receivers out on Netflix. Everybody's excited about that. Oh, I wanted to go to the uh, Shams report. Before we talk about an Andrew Marchand report in the uh, National Basketball Association, Anthony Edwards is getting more money. And this affects you in a way because you're a proud owner of the AE5 shoe, the new Adidas Anthony Edwards shoe. Uh, He has reached a multi-year contract extension with Adidas that sources say reaches eight figures annually. So he's about to get his new Supermax contract. That's going to kick in here shortly. And also Adidas money for Anthony Edwards. So good for Ant-Man. I would definitely say two things to Ant-Man. I'd say congratulations, and I would say be careful. (laughs) That's all I'm going to say. I understand. (laughs) I think most people do. Uh, Speaking of money and the NBA, Mm. the NBA and all the networks apparently have finalized the contracts. Is TNT out? I'll tell you. Oh, NBC and Amazon Prime Video will be the new partners while maintaining ABC and ESPN as the home for the NBA Finals. Under agreements, according to Andrew Marchand, who used to be with the Post, right, and then just went to um, the Athletic, That's where he is now. Yep. 11 season deals will be worth in total $76 billion. <laughs> 76 with a B. With a B. $76 billion. So I think I'm doing the math right. It's like about $7 bill a year. Somewhere around there. Little, you know, and give you, or take. And you wonder why Glenn Taylor does not, after all, want to sell the Minnesota Timberwolves. Seriously. Uh, as he writes, while the NBA and its partner agreed to all the language, incumbent TNT Sports continues to threaten to match. The CEO of TNT Sports parent company, Warner Brothers Discovery's David Zaslav, has publicly stated he may attempt to use language in the current contract to remain involved with the NBA if he does go through with that. He and TNT are expected to target Amazon's package 
and get that one. It seems pretty clear that NBC's good right. to go. Yeah. Obviously, ESPN and ABC are good to go. TNT is trying to recapture the Amazon package, match that package, whatever it is. So they're they're holding on to the notion that if we do match it contractually, we get it. That's what they believe. Of course, you know, A Rod and Lori thought they had a deal done with the to, to buy the the wolves. So that might be another battle. Yes. I'm confused though because I thought it was over. I mean, I thought TNT had pretty much. Why did we have all these emotional farewells then and all these stories about how many people's jobs are lost and it's the end of an era and all of that when they're apparently, according to this story, the door was still a little bit open? Or is this TNT's big shots finally owning up to the fact that we got to pony up the big bucks and stop pretending that we can't? I don't know. The whole thing's strange to me. And I can't remember. So the Amazon video package here is anticipated to have games streamed predominantly on Friday nights and Saturdays. NBC will have games on Tuesdays. And then Peacock's going to have some on Monday. I'm just trying to figure out which package. Uh Uh-oh. What was your favorite Greg Berhalter moment? Oh, the the men's national team soccer coach guy? Several media outlets reporting that not a big surprise at this point, but they are reporting that he has been dismissed as the uh, U.S. Soccer, yeah, coach Rinse after and a very embarrassing uh, performance in the was it the Copa America? We didn't get very far, did we? I don't think we did. No, we didn't get very no. far at all. So he, he, you know, I don't know how much of the heat he deserves. How uh, many but, coaches have we been through? But he's in the last getting it, decade. Yeah, uh, probably too many. It seems like a lot. Um, so he is apparently out. I'm assuming there's already rampant speculation on who who will replace him. Well, I look forward to Brett Blakemore and Robbie Rosenhaus's soccer podcast. Yeah. Hopefully an emergency pod breaking down the possibilities and the reactions. You should have one other basketball item, too. At least. Well, what is it? Kawhi Leonard. Leaving Team USA. Yeah, leaving Team USA. Did you already mention that? Not I have, listening? No, no, but it I mean, was, I, I'm it's on the list of, of little oh, things. Oh, you're going to get to it. I was considering getting to it. I was going to talk twins. I wasn't really sure. I was going to see how yeah, the clock went. Well, we're fine. We we, this, we got another we minute started. and a half. Yeah, we got at least another minute and a half. So Kawhi, yeah, is basically saying, "I'll respect the wishes of the international people." I, I, I talked the U.S. that run the U.S. team, Olympic team, and the Clippers, who apparently have said, "Wait a minute now, a guy wasn't available for the postseason, and he's going to play internationally." Um, so Kawhi is out, and I think it's uh, it's the it's a Boston Celtic who's replacing him, correct? Derek White. Derek White, yeah. Derek White is who they believe will be on the deal. Leonard missed 12 of the last 14 games of the Clippers after playing, for him, an extraordinary number of regular season games, if you recall. Yeah, now, usually I'm kind of on the... I go back and forth on whose side I am on this because it is such a unique opportunity for all these players. Yes. And for Leonard, I didn't even realize this, this would have been his first Olympics. You kind of think I didn't of realize that a, No, I, I think a lot of it had to do has had to do with injury the, the previous couple of times, but he would. And I don't know if it really matters to him or means something to him. I have to imagine that it does. But he's a, he felt ready to compete. But as you say, the Clippers have said we, we don't really want you to do it, so he won't. I so. can't blame the Clippers in this case. Yeah. To be honest with you, um, I, like I said, I. I, I'd be, if I'm the Clippers, I kind of want to move on, although I, they can't because they already moved on on Paul George. Yep. Um, it, we all know how good Kawhi is, but I've, on him, you just reach a point where you go, well, is it over? It just might be, relatively speaking, over. Uh, Derek White already was on one of our international teams, I think, in 2019, which I did not realize. Me neither. Um, he just got a bucket load of money, too. Who's the best Detroit Piston who just got, like, Two hundred and sixty-five. He just signed a two hundred sixty-five million dollar contract extension. Honestly, it's good being an NBA player. Well, right and we know why. We you, you just I laid just out how it. how lucrative the new TV deal is going to be. I keep waiting for the numbers to come down a little bit. There are no signs of that there, are there? How can those they? numbers are obscene? Well, we're talking seventy-six million dollars. You can't see it. By the way, if you want to watch Anthony Edwards and Team USA. And Nikhil Alexander Walker for Team Canada, I believe they oh, are in action right. tonight. Yeah, you're exactly right. At I'm glad you mentioned that. Yep. On Fox Sports One. Fox, FS1. FS1 as we say in the business. FS1 in the business. So you can watch that tonight if you're looking for something. Nikhil Alexander Walker, one of many. Good for uh, Naw. 
to make the uh, men's national team for Canada, and he'll represent them in the Olympics as well. All right, now we are out of time. Which is why I'm going to tell you how to win $1,000. The fan in BigDeck.com would love to give you a grand in your hand. And the keyword, the final one of the evening, is credit. Go to KFAN.com and enter the keyword credit. If you're looking for the Twins game, can't watch it on Bally. They lost today 3-1 to one to Chicago in the first game of the doubleheader, and it's the bottom of the fifth. They trail the White Sox 2-0 right now. Still have oh. just one Matt Walner oh, hit. How embarrassing would it be to get uh, the doubleheader sweep against the White Sox or the White Sox to get the doubleheader sweep on us after we won the opener yesterday. Kessler soon. Lots to discuss with him. Don't go away. Man. I don't want to belabor the obvious, but uh, doubleheader, Twins, White Sox, all the trouble really was foreshadowed by the opening stanza of the first game. Twins start with the bases loaded and nobody out. And they did not score. It's frustrating. Everything else has gone downhill from uh, from that point, and they are losing game number two. Where's Kessler? He's right here. Well, he can come in. Tell him to come in. You want to go in, Pat? we got stuff to talk He's about. He's used to the 530. Yeah, yeah. my contract doesn't uh, <laughs> allow me to walk in until 530. Well, stay there. <laughs> you can stay there for this segment. Seriously. Don't well, that's even right. Move. I can do it from here. You can do it from there. I can see you. Yeah, that I can mic hear works. You. That mic works. It's just as well. Go ahead. And you want to play the music, Garzy? Well, now I'm not prepared, but yeah, I can. Well, well, well he'll have time with the open to go into the studio. So why don't I play the music and then you can move all your stuff? No, it doesn't. It takes him. He's slow. He's old and slow. The open takes forever. I wish the American media would take a great look at the views of the people in Congress and find out are they being in there? Is that the problem? You don't unsettling. like him under your, over your shoulder like that? It's a little unsettling. Like who? Do I look at you? Do I look at him? He's an heir. Why don't you go in there? He's, look, now he's all discombobulated. I, he, he, he ripped he the headset off. off. He should have stayed there. Kessler, just stay there for this second. No, go. <laughs> you got like 10 it's seconds. too late. Now we're going to have dead air. <laughs> Luckily, there's still 30 seconds left in the open. 64686. Six, I feel like a supermodel except like times 10. That's the cafe and text line. If you have questions or concerns or observations for uh, Kessler. He's back with us for the first time, and it, it, it feels like about a month. I know, and, and, and while I was away, I just went out and had a cigarette while the uh, open was playing. You used to be a pipe smoker, didn't you? I was. You know, <laughs> you know I, I should have been. Yeah. I you, bet you, you I did. Look, you've I'll been a very distinguished-looking pipe smoker. What, back one in of the those... day, you know, the pipe is the... And then I, What then was I... the name of the... Um, what was the particular name of the pipe that Sherlock Holmes... Meerschaum, wasn't it? Perfect. Meerschaum. Very good. Yeah, one of Very the, good yeah. Meerschaum pipe. So I, yeah. think I, I think I smoked a pipe during the... Uh, didn't Ron Burgundy, Anchorman, Might have. smoke a pipe? It's been a while since Could I've have. seen it. Yeah, and then, and then you... Well, I think this is the like the 75th anniversary of Anchorman <laughs> this week. Be. This might week. Be. So, uh, There's yeah. a lot of anniversaries right now. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, have you ever... Been? Are you familiar with the? Um, remember the commercial? What was the brand? Cigars, cigarettes, Tipperillos, cigars. C- yeah, and it was a very comely woman, uh, carrying around. You know, she had like that. She had. What, what, what do you call the thing she carried? Well, it would be with like all a, the, case a, a case with a, with with a strap, like a around, strap around, around her neck. neck. Yes. Exactly it. A, a case in front cigars, of her. Cigars, cigarettes, cigarettes Tipperillos. Tipperillos. I think there is a Twilight Zone. Really, with uh, with something like that could be, it makes sense because it's chilling. It's it's just chilling when uh, that. Were you ever a Tipperillo fan? You know, I've tried everything. You have, haven't you? Well, pretty much, it, pretty yeah. much. Well, you live long enough. You, you know, should. I know. Yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> it's the beauty of being not as old as Biden, but no, almost. close enough. Um, can I ask you a personal question to start? Of course. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> have you ever? Even I have my limits, but go ahead. <laughs> have you ever raw dogged it? You know, I, I hear you talking about this. Yes, and I'm not sure what that means. Well, it, it sounds it's real. pretty it's raw at times. It's, it's real. It, raw. it sounds provocative. It once upon a time it was, but the term has broadened in its Thank usage. Thank God. 
And the raw dogging that we were discussing yesterday, by the way, don't text me with the original meaning. We know it. You're not, we're, 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 we're okay. You're not, not going to shock get, Dan. And we're not going to get thrown off the air. We're fine for now. Um, the new form of raw dogging, as written by several respectable publications, is when you are taking a, a lengthy air flight. You know, mm-hmm. uh, maybe across the Atlantic, maybe across the Pacific. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't know what the 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 the, the shortest amount of time, but it, I want to say like five hours or more. There are people who say they are vowing to raw dog it, which means not going to read, not going to watch a movie, might not even eat. I am going to spend that entire time, other than going to the restroom, looking straight ahead at the seat in front of me. Maybe the a lot of uh, uh, planes now will allow you to track. There's a, there's a tracker that yeah, will the track tracker the, on the, the little your, screen the progress in front of, of your first flight. class anyway. Well, that's it exactly, and that that's the extent of what you do. That you don't use any of the crutches that most minions, most little people resort to to try to shorten the flight, to try to give you this the 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 the, the perception that the that it's almost like a marathon. Faster. Yeah. I've never heard of this. It's big. It's I've never heard of it by the minute. So you have five hours of introspection. That's it. That's in theory what it's Do about. Do you have headphones on the noise canceling? You're not headphones. supposed to. If you want to if you on. if you want to be a pure raw dog. Yes. You can't cheat with with even a headset, but you you can reflect. You don't even have to reflect. It, it's not an obligation to reflect. It's I'm not going to clutter my mind with anything. I've never heard of this. I've never done it. Never will. Never will. Never you, will. you have a couple of golden opportunities coming up this football season. You know we do, including West the Vikings Coast? trip to London. Oh yeah, well, yeah. You know, oh, you going this on is that? the time I, to do it. No, no. You know, you're I going. don't know. You're going, but you're going so, as the, as the extra. The well, I will tell one. you that it's a, it, it's very rare that I watch a movie on on a flight. I, I never, never. Do. If you know, yeah, I, I can't remember the last time. Why is that? Uh, you know, I just figure there's better things to do. Which is. For you? Introspection. <laughs> raw no, dogging. Yeah. I'll put, you know, maybe you're a natural raw dog. You were doing it before it became I, I don't know. a trend. No, I li- I'll listen to uh, like music, okay. like jazz music right. or something. Uh, I will read on the okay. on the tablet. Thumb but, through your art history text. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm. are we reading magazines and that kind of thing anymore, or are we all on our tablets? There's still some people who will pick up And by up the way, that, that was really uncalled for. What? The which art history? Shot? Yeah. <laughs> which one? We're going to have to keep track. Okay, fine. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, what are you doing? And I'll, I will eat, I suppose. You know, get the cookies. Well, yeah, and you're we'll... going to get a, You're in first class. So you're going to get the great meal. Yeah, of course. Yeah, maybe the stuff you've taken out of the three Sky meals. Club. That's true. <laughs> the Delta Lounge. You. Well, so what you do, you... You're the one of those people who takes a doggy bag out of the Sky Club, don't you? When well, well, I followed I, him out of the lounge on the way I, to, where were we going? Chapel I, Hill. I can't remember. I did. I do. Uh, I confess that I will take a few cookies. I will. Yeah, and the the bags of chips, the sea salts. You like those? I, I like that too. Yeah. I mean, because you got to have something. So this doesn't because they serve a drink before you even take off. <laughs> Of course they do. They do. So it doesn't sound like this. So far from the farm. Inspires you. This isn't like, oh my God, this is great. I can't wait. I, this is, I can't wait you know, to raw dog. I'm, I am uh, someone who is, I'm open Man to of all. simple pleasures. I, I am, I, I am, and I'm open to all experiences, but that doesn't sound uh, fulfilling, gratifying to me. Are, have you done it? And will you do it? No. Flying I, to Hawaii. I, well, I have, I have. No, I mean I I don't watch movies much at all, and I and I don't mind stretches where I'm not doing anything but staring at that screen. So maybe I've done it like the not flight even tracker, know, yeah. And you can switch it to the cabin, uh, the, the the window view. <laughs> you can. And, that's exactly options. it. Well, yeah. for you in first class, um, but eventually I end up reading some of that time. But I mean, so I'm I'm. I'm a maybe a semi raw dogger. I I don't know because I there aren't. Here's what I said yesterday about the movie thing. I think the decision on what movie to pick becomes a source of stress for me, 
And I think that's part of the reason I just don't bother because it's like, I'm think you go in going, well, there's a hundred choices. There I got to find there something. Are. And then I get to choice 95 and I'm going, I'm still not happy. I think and I, I want go the back one, number right. three. I might go back all the way back to three and then <laughs> yes. I start number three and I go, ah, I'm not in the mood for this. And then by the end of it, I go, this is creating more stress than if I raw dog. And it. you've wasted all this time. Correct. But I think that you either raw dog or you don't raw dog. So you, you can't do a modified limited hangout. You cannot well, do it. Well, no, if you, not if you want to be. I don't be, think you can. Not if you want to be uh, pure about it and you want to be. Well, listening to your discussion about the uh, controversial hot dog discussion, I, I honestly did not know what raw dog was. But I thought it was about eating raw hot dogs. Mm. Well, it could be, but that's very different. And which you've done, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't most Many men. Times. I do. Yeah. I mean, come on. Eat chicken noodle soup right out yeah, of the can. Yeah, you have to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why do you have to cook it? You don't. <laughs> done. It's pre-cooked, isn't so it? So, no, uh, no, never done that, and I don't think I'll ever try it. All right, here's the, the toss-up question mm -hmm. for you to think about during the break. Mm -hmm. When we talk at this same time... Next Wednesday. Next week. Next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Will Joe Biden still be the presumptive oh, Democratic nominee? Oh, that's a good question. For the fall election. Uh, well, that will get us into uh, all of that juicy stuff with Kessler for the first time in a while. Steve. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Kessie. Um, Oldsmobile guy asks a very pertinent question. Mm -hmm. Gun to your head. Would you rather raw dog it? Or attend the nothing but as basketball extravaganza. <laughs> I'll hang up and listen. That's also a guy. <laughs> you did hear about oh, that controversy, right? The yeah. nothing but as. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's funny. Ill-fated event. That, yeah. uh, <laughs> no, nothing but as, of course. Yeah, it's, just, it's just so good. It's oh, so good. good. People are funny. Truth is, is, is better than fiction. We oh, learn time God, and time again. I know. All right, so you've had some time to think about it. A week from today... Mm -hmm. Is Joe Biden going to remain in the running to be reelected as president of the United States? Well, let's set the stage because it is Monday, this coming Monday, that the Republican National Convention opens and they're going to... Dayline Milwaukee, is that uh, correct? Dayline Milwaukee, a horrible city. As President as, Trump said. As, yeah, he did say that. It's right. a horrible city. Horrible, yes. Um, and um, and <laughs> so the convention opens. Uh, he will be nominated, of course, and he is the odds-on favorite uh, in a possible landslide victory over Joe Biden. So the question is, uh, Joe Biden getting the pressure to drop out of the race... He's got Clooney on his ass now. How about that? I, honest to God, I almost texted you with that um, because I am a man of a certain age. And uh, Walter Cronkite, uh, yeah. once you lose Clooney, here's the deal. So they're all set up for Biden and uh, they are going to go after Biden like crazy uh, in not, and then they're going to nominate a vice presidential candidate. That'll be we'll, the bulldog. We'll get to that. I want to talk right, about right, that. Right, right, right. But all, what I'm saying is, so if you're Biden, yes, do you do it after NATO? You know, you don't want to do it, of course. You know, the politics stops at the shore, kind of. Uh, so you don't want to do it while all the NATO folks are here. Yeah. And do you wait till after the convention so they are going after Biden? All go, their bile is on Biden. Yeah. And we say, wait, you wasted your sorry, time. He's not the guy. Done. He's not going to be the guy. Yes. So uh, I would say he is still in it, but... Time's a ticking. He's got to do something. Well, is there here. such a thing as a drop dead date in no. your mind? Oh well, I would in say in terms of you know making a switch. There, there are laws and there are rules in the right. Democratic Party that you know you could do it theoretically a couple of weeks before the actual election. There are actual laws if he drops out, if something happens to a candidate after the election, but before the Electoral College. I mean, there's all sorts of these. But the Republicans would, and, and Donald Trump in particular, would love, would love to have Biden remain as the candidate. In fact, I believe uh, the families that want him more than anybody uh, to stay in the race are Biden's family and Trump's family. They both yes. want him to be the candidate because he is now the uh, the wounded deer, you know, that you're going to go after. Okay, so help me out. Uh, we had a question much earlier in the show on 
what the rules are regarding the Biden campaign war chest, which is considerable. So funny, we're talking about him like he's not going to be the candidate. Well, I, exactly. Okay. But again, if, because uh, uh, I'd read a piece yesterday mm-hmm. suggesting mm-hmm. that he can, he has to accept in order to have control over where that money goes, as in that money then going to, let's say, Harris, for example. Sure. He has to be nominated. He has to accept the nomination, and then literally five minutes later, he could say, I'm out. And at that point, legally, that money could be, re- all that money, and it's a lot of money, could be then released to uh, presumably Harris, uh, Vice President Harris, or whoever else it would be. Do you understand those rules at all? Well, the the uh, experts that I'm reading, and there's something called election task force, there are a number of uh, election reporters that are now, and professors that are are trying to discern it. It's a little more complicated and much more murky uh, than, because it's modern rules, but this has never happened before. Uh, so if he drops out before the convention, it's really unclear uh, what happens to the money. He cannot be forced out of the race. He won these delegates fair and square. Just ask Dean Phillips. He <laughs> won these delegates fair and square, and he cannot be forced out of the race. Um, but if he does drop out uh, before the convention, the delegates are still bound to vote for him. Think about that. I'm going to say that again. So let's say he drops out before the August 16th Democratic Party convention. And my understanding is that these delegates are still bound on the first ballot to him. Uh, so they vote for Biden and he doesn't get enough, uh, let's say, you know, whatever it is. So he, that is uh, the mixing up the delegates and the money. Once the money is there, it's Harris's money, too. There, she's on this ticket. It's Harris. It's Biden Harris. They've signed all the election certificates. All the fundraising stuff, it goes to both of them. But it doesn't necessarily mean there's different ways they could distribute this money. Uh, It could be donated to the DNC if it's another candidate besides Harris. There's a lot of different ways this goes. So the bottom line is no one knows exactly where the money goes, but everybody agrees, or when it goes. Mm -hmm. But everybody agrees that this is Joe Biden's money, $91 million. And it's Kamala Harris's money also. So if if she ends up being the nominee, she'll get all that money. But if she's not the nominee, it could also go in different ways to different candidates. So what is your best position on if indeed there's a breaking point here and the dam bursts and Biden, President Biden says, "Okay, uh, I'm out. Who gets him there? Is it? Do you buy the notion that it would have to be his wife? God, I've thought a lot about this. Uh, that that there's that he isn't yeah. listening to anybody, else, including aides yeah. that got thrown under the bus after the debate. That, um, and and you know why now? Is he going to listen to George Clooney? Is he going to listen to Nancy Pelosi, who seemed to kind of play it both ways? It's his decision, <laughs> but he's already made the decision, Nancy. Well, no, but when he makes the decision. I, well, I hope he thinks about it, and it's just, the whole <laughs> thing is so, so silly. That is so cold. It, it, it's, that is it's cold bizarre. as ice. So, or do you, is it the old? You know, he wakes up one morning and says, "It's just this isn't." I mean, because I want to hold on to the possibility, because I think this would be even more remarkable and delicious as a story that he doesn't quit. Oh my that God. he says, oh my God. "I am going to the mat on this." And that's what he's can, saying. He is. And I, you, you, you can, you can be with me. You can be against me. I'm going to remind you again who I'm, who I'm up against. Mm-hmm. You want him? Okay. It's up to you. It's up to you. But I ain't going anywhere. Yeah. If you're, if you're putting a percentage on Biden, literally being the guy, because forget the deadline I gave you. Because as I said, even if they think he's going to go, it's not a smart for him to go as soon as next Wednesday. Probably. What are the odds that he basically? defies all the critics, all the odds makers, all the pundits, and he's running. I think the odds today are probably 50-50 or even greater. That is his thing. He's a very stubborn guy. People love him. We've heard so much love for this guy from the Democrats, but they say he is very stubborn, very aggressive. If he wants to do something, he goes ahead and does it. 
But let's game this out just a little bit. Uh, I have found it a little bit insulting that they say, don't pay attention to that 90 minutes you saw him in the debate. Pay attention to the last three and a half years. We got to pay attention to the next three and a half years. That's where people ought to be paying attention. Let's say he goes through this, game this out, uh, and wins and ekes out a victory and there's uh, riots all over the country, whatever. He wins. Then what? What happens then? Uh, the cognitive abilities that we've seen and doctors that are opining from far away, this could be a rapid uh, escalation of his cognitive abilities. And who is going to run the country? We hear Democrats saying today, well, the Kamala Harris is there and he's got good people around him. That's not who we're electing. We're not electing a team. We're not electing Kamala Harris. We're electing Biden. If he loses, if he loses, uh, then the Democrats will be set back probably for a very, very long time. Who's the biggest villain? Is it Jill Biden? Is it Jill? Is she become unfairly the villain here for urging her man to I'd stay in the race? Yeah. I'd be the kid who's I mean, apparently now front and center. So then take it a different direction. Who is going to talk? Who will he listen to? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Obama? Uh, his wife, uh, number one, his wife, and uh, perhaps Ask David Axelrod. No, because that's an Obama guy. Yeah, he and he's pretty upset with David Axelrod, yeah. who says he's not just going to lose; he's more likely I know. to lose I, I read that in the piece. landscape. Yes, and he, if he, he is not likely to win, eke out a win, he's likely to lose in a landslide. So, who goes to him? Uh, in politics, I have seen over and over and over again. They say I'm a hundred percent, hundred percent behind you, hundred percent, hundred percent. Until I'm not. Same with a candidate. I'm in this race. I'm going to win it. I'm in it, in it, in it. All right, I'm out. That's how abrupt this can be. It could be Obama and Clinton going to him. Uh, it could be Schumer and Pelosi going to him. When the leaders of the party go to him the same way the leaders of the party went to Richard Nixon, that could have some effect. But he has no apparent self-awareness to say, you know what, things might not be the way I think they are. And, you know, there it is. Did the Stephanopoulos interview change anything? Too short, first of all, 22 minutes, not long enough. But no, it did not change a thing. Uh, he still had trouble putting sentences together, stumbled a little bit. Uh, he he was better, you know, than he was in the debate, of course. Why did they wait a week? Why did they wait a week before they get aggressive? Uh, I, I just, I'm, I'm so, uh, I'm befuddled by what has happened in, in, since the debate. But and you and I have talked about this for many months, times. That they many did times. him, in terms of press conferences. The Super Bowl debate. Yeah, the Super yeah, Bowl that's right. uh, interview. You're right. Remember that? That's I mean, exactly like, right. What is that all about? No, 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 which either tells you they didn't trust him, or B, you, you made it hard for him to even get in any kind of a rhythm that might get him to a better place. Either way, it does not go well. How about one of the theories that's been advanced, I don't know what party elders are involved with this, is the notion that Obama and Clinton would lead some kind, I don't even know if I understand it, maybe you do, I some think, yeah. sort of like mini prime, you know, emergency pro series of primaries, presumably before the convention, or would it just be before the election? Well, I don't know, what is that all about? Do you remember before uh, the internet, uh, and Garzi will know this, uh, Tinder? Remember all that before you used to... Big Tinder guy, <laughs> Garzi, back in the day, yeah. Remember when, I think they called it speed dating, remember that? Do you swipe left or swipe right? You don't at all. Oh, you don't swipe? With speed dating. Oh, that, well, yeah, that's so you remember filled you, out a form. Filled out a form. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you go to like a hotel ballroom, right? I, yes. I think, was this in the 80s? You know, I, I kind of remember this. <laughs> but um, that's where yeah. I met my gal. Well, and it's been, <laughs> been love at first sight. It was. You, it the was. Rest is history. And she would urge me to stay in the race. <laughs> <laughs> she wants me. She wants me to stay on yes. the show. Yes, on this show, even though I'm <laughs> showing signs yes. of um, I'm, I'm mental disability. So, um, so that is what it would be. So, if he drops out, and then uh, you open it up to everybody, and and I think the Democrats, and I also think the Republicans 
have a very deep bench. There's great candidates in the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And the Democrats have some really good people that could do this. You start it with six, um, then you go to four, then you go to two, you know, whatever it is. Um, and you have debates. Start a debate with six, and Obama and Clinton, this is the proposal, of the or pipe dream as we like to call it, that they would uh, they would do this and uh, moderate these debates. You have six candidates, then you got four, then you got two, and then you pick a candidate. There are rules in the Democratic Party uh, to get down to two, and some of the rules include the all the grand poobahs of the party get together and they pick a candidate. So give everybody a frickin' cigar, go in the back room, pick somebody, back and just tell me who it is. Smoke filled room. Days. Do it now. You know, and just tell me who it is. Uh, where is Amy Klobuchar on all this? Uh, she is cautious, very careful. Uh, she uh, she does not believe, and she's probably right, that Trump will win Minnesota. But this state is absolutely in play. I still I know. doubt that he's going to win this state. But I, I, I do, too. I, well, go ahead. But but th that's the thing. It now is uh, all of the pollsters and mm -hmm. looking at the, the metrics. This state now uh, is no longer solid blue, solid Democrat. It now leans Democrat. Amy Klobuchar is a great campaigner. Uh, she has been a very good senator in that. She keeps track of all the stuff, mm -hmm. all the politics, all the offices, every part of the state. She's the top vote getter in the state of Minnesota. But if Biden is not on the ticket, is it better or worse from her? That is a very big question. And the only – and Tina Smith, Senator Smith, is the same way. They're very cautious about it. The only candidate – the only politician, high-level politician in the state of Minnesota besides Tim Waltz who's come out for Joe Biden 100 yeah. percent. Who do you think it is? Your gal, Ilhan Omar, is the only one who says, I'm riding with Biden. She's the only one. Let me ask you this. So far. Uh, 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 they all love uh, him and they all support him, but yes, it's a question of whether of he should get out of Correct. the race. Let me yeah. ask you a serious question here. Do you, is there any part of you that worries about this, this tsunami within, from within the party to say it's over? When you tell me, I don't know how many people voted, but... 12, 13 million. Voted in through the prime. Now, again, there it's, it's the incumbent. I get that. But the fact is, those were votes in those primaries. And you say, can't mess with that. It, it, that's, a, that's a dangerous thing to mess with in a democracy. What do you uh, say it, to that? It's a, it's a really in, interesting question, and I think it's valid. These, however, they're, they're absolute votes, and there are laws that set up these elections but it's not like voting for president in the election. These are more political votes. Uh, they're political parties who set this up. You're some In some states, you have to be a Republican or a Democrat to vote right. this. I mean, I'm not being facetious here, but just ask uh, Dean Phillips, Minnesota congressman, who tried to run against him when no one else would, and... The Democrats have, quote unquote, rigged these primaries so that only Biden could be the candidate. So it wasn't, again, I'm putting air quotes around this, free and fair, as you might right. think. Also think back to four years ago uh, in 2020 when we had all these people in the race, including uh, our own Amy Klobuchar. And it wasn't like they ended up uh, like the this guy got the most votes and then he remember. They all stepped back when the Democratic Party bosses said, you know what, we're going to unite behind Joe Biden. Everybody just took a... It's true. Yeah, I mean, that's what they did. They yep. stepped back, uh, in, including Buttigieg. I think they were worried that that um, uh, uh, Senator Bernie Sanders would be the nominee. So it's not as if this is the sacred You're saying vote, it's not I, as I pure yeah. as... I, I agree that, right. you know, they should be counted yeah. and it's absolutely valid. So somebody said we never paid off the tease about will Biden step down by the next visit with Kessler. You did pay it off. I think your yeah. payoff was you do not think he will be out by next Wednesday, which is not the same thing as saying he won't be out. Yeah, I, right. I, think, I, I think it's still very possible because the Republican, he's going to drop out of the race. Because of the theory that... Do you drop out in the middle of the Republican exactly, convention? Exactly. Yeah, I'd say I'd say no. I could be wrong, but I'd say nay. Um, here's another text 
I want to get your reaction to. Uh, people who need to feel better about Biden should listen to his interview with Howard Stern. It was about a month ago. It was great. About an hour long. If I was the DNC, I would have it on their website for everyone to see slash hear. It really humanizes him and clarifies how he is such a better choice than Trump. Is that can is that sellable at this point, though? I don't know that it is. It should be out there. I don't remember. A couple of things about it. I mean, uh, I, I love Howard Stern. He's a great interviewer. I listened to the whole thing. Uh, he was very uh, soft on Biden. Uh, there, no hard questions. Right. It was fine. Out of that interview came, by the way, uh, the question. He says, well, what are you going to are you ever going to debate uh, Donald Trump? And he says, yeah, sure, I'll debate him. And that was that's the extent of the answer. But that blew up into this June 27th debate. That's what became of that's how it started. Uh, it was the, the texter is absolutely right. They went way deep into his childhood and what it was like to be bullied and people tried to beat him up. And I mean, all of that, his stammer. They went into all the real personal, uh, loving family things about uh, about him. And it was great. It, it, it was really good. Is that the Joe Biden we see now is the question I think that people want. And is there such a thing when you're 81 years old and perhaps, and we don't know anything, right. but perhaps suffering from some debilitating uh, old age diseases, uh, even dementia, if it's beginning, is it just, I just had a bad night? Is, is, should we buy that? Or is this much deeper than that? And that's why the media are focusing on this, uh, even to the exclusion of, well, why haven't you gone after Trump like this? So I get it. And and the listener's right. That was a that was a great interview of Joe Biden. And that's why so many people say out loud, I love this guy. Mm -hmm. He's a great guy. I just don't think he ought to be running. Yes, I don't know that it's enough to turn the tide yeah, yeah, yeah. at this point, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's worth noting. Uh, let's pause here. I want to get into who Trump is going to pick for VP because the, the the Republican convention is next week, correct? Starting Monday. Starting Monday. Uh, you're not going to Milwaukee, but you are going to Chicago to recreate your time at the 68 Remember Democratic that. convention. Remember when that? Oh, we got to talk. And Abby Hoffman yes. had several contentious yeah. conversations about the whole strategy. World is watching. Exactly. You and the, the yippies whole and the world dippies is, well, oh and God. everybody and that Mayor Daly, the whole bit. K fan needs to send me there. Actually, we should. That's not a bad idea. More Kessler when we come back. Is Dean Phillips demanding an apology from everybody at this point? Is he doing a victory lap? He has apparently broken his silence finally. Is that correct? You know, he he, he has. Um, and the thing about this is that we've been talking about him for months. And, and I think we ought to pose a question. Do the Democrats and does everybody owe Dean Phillips an apology? He got drummed out of the party for running against Joe Biden. When did he declare his candidacy? Was it like October, November? He went around right, yeah. trying to yeah. get people to run. He says, you guys, you don't understand. He's not the person that he was before. And people made fun of him. They, he was shunned, lost his leadership position. And now, funny, funny, everybody's on board. So I'm going to look up what he said. Uh, he has been silent with all of this uh, over the last... Um, you know, the well, basically uh, post debate. right? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing he said on Twitter and he had it up right after the debate, uh, it was a quote from Gandhi, your guy, Mahatma Gandhi. And it said something like, um, uh, do not break the silence unless it is constructive, something like that. So and I'm going to look uh, been touched by the Dalai <laughs> Lama. Yeah. How about that? Very similar. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very different. similar. Uh, so here, I've, I've lost it, so I'm going to look up his uh, what he just said last night. So what has been really difficult is the lament for a lot of people in Minnesota, Minnesota Democrats, is not necessarily, of course, people were ticked off at him because he went up against Biden, but also because his he sacrificed his career, sabotaged his own career doing this. This is a guy who is thoughtful, he's articulate. Uh, he's a moderate. He's somebody who was a really, really good elected official and possible future senator, governor, maybe uh, may, maybe just that. Now, here's what he said on June 28th. Speak only if it improves on the silence. 
That's what uh, that's what he said. So no. the moral being, he didn't have to say anything else because everybody else was doing it for him. And I think that's so enough said silent. in English. Yeah, that's enough said. No, that's uh, the translation. Since, but he 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 had a tweet storm now last I can't, night. Now I can't uh, pull it up, but okay. uh, it was uh, it was like something like uh, uh, vindication is not important at this point. Uh, why be vindicated? It's not a good feeling. So too much, too much at stake. Uh, yeah, so maybe uh, some of our listeners, follow. somehow I yeah. can't pull it up. But uh, Well, while we're looking, we're finding that, um, who's going to be, who's your pick for Trump's running mate? Not who you think he should pick, but who you think he ultimately will. Boy, that's a, that's a, that's a tough one. Uh, it's very interesting because on Tuesday, the convention opens Monday, his vice presidential pick will be speaking to the convention on Tuesday. A lot of people thought after the debate the plan was uh, he was going to roll out his vice presidential pick, but after after Biden um, screwed the pooch, so to speak, uh, in, in the debate, strategically and very smartly, I think, uh, the Trump campaign said, no, we're just going to stand back and watch this unfold. So the, it's generally accepted, and who knows, there are three people left. J.D. Vance, the senator from Ohio, uh, Senator Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida. Lil Marco? Is that what he used to call him? Oh, was it Lil then, Marco, oh among other God. things? Yeah, Remember Lil, that? Yeah. Oh, yes. and he would mimic him drinking yeah. water. Yes. Oh, yes. God. And the third one is our guy, one of us, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. Those were our thought to be the top three. And who knows? Trump uh, could surprise everybody. Uh, this is like uh, the roll-up to a TV show, and we'll all watch it when it happens. There is reporting in the last day or so that Trump doesn't like the look of one of his candidates, one of his possible candidates, and that is J.D. Vance. Doesn't like the beard. Doesn't like the beard. <laughs> and so it doesn't look presidential to have a beard. Um, just ask Rutherford B. Hayes that. Run that by him. So Rubio is from Florida. Can you have two candidates from the same state? I don't think so, you know. Yeah. Does that leave somebody who is... Some dark horse that we're not thinking about? Doug Burgum. Um, he is very low-key, does not outshine Donald Trump, uh, is somebody who is a billionaire in his own right, hundreds of millionaire in his own right, a very careful politician, conservative, solid, reliably conservative, and... Very, uh, very stable guy. Just uh, might be somebody you could fall back on if you needed to. So if I had to pick one, that's who I would pick right now. But I'll, I'll be wrong. You know, I'll could you rule out Aaron Rodgers? God, would that be so fantastic? <laughs> who was the other one well, back then? So it was Aaron Rodgers and, and yeah, somebody who was else. It? There was another there was another beaten one. track. Well, that was for that was actually for first time around was for Kennedy. Uh, somebody asked me about this yesterday. I, I promised I would ask you. Uh-huh. So. Where is Bobby Kennedy Jr. in this thing? Is he in it at all? Who? What impact? Has he got less of an impact as we get closer, do we think? More of an impact? Does it depend on what the Democrats do? Where, where does he fit into all Wasn't it Jesse? I thought Jesse? Oh, it was Jesse. Jesse. It was Thank Jesse. you. Why yeah. could we not remember that? Yeah, Jesse. That, yeah. Yes, of Sorry. course. That's exactly who it was. Um, so he has actually upticked a little bit in the polling. So he is about at, uh, let's say, 10%, 9.9%. But he is somebody who has actually, um, the, the, somebody who has actually not done as well as he should have right. because he posted a, somebody posted a picture of him holding a barbecued dog. I missed that story. When did that happen? A barbecued dog? Dog? So van Vanity Fair, do you, do you think if people think I'm making this stuff up? <laughs> no, I'm not making it up. Um, here, let's. I, I just googled uh, where Bobby Kennedy Jr. is right now. Here are the headlines that pop up. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, sexual assault. Uh, he denies. How about Tulsi Gabbard for uh, for Trump? You know what? That would be uh, that would be a surprise pick, and I think she'd be great. Uh, she is a former Democrat. Yeah. Uh, she is uh, someone who is on the righty side of the Democrats. They yes. call them they call them moderates. Uh, she uh, knows TV. Uh, she looks the part. She would not overshadow him. I hadn't thought of that, and maybe that's one that's just uh, flying 
uh, under the radar. She That would be a very interesting pick, actually. All right, here are the headlines. Um, RFK responds to sexual assault allegations. Uh, he There was a Vanity Fair article which uh, claimed, and he does not deny, that he... Um, assaulted a the the nanny for his kids uh, when he doesn't he, deny it. He doesn't deny it. No, he says he was he had a very rambunctious youth, and that's his words, not mine. Okay. Here is one. Um, the Hill reports that RFK Jr. says it was a goat, not a dog, in that Vanity Fair story. Oh, okay, um, that was a bar that he was holding up a barbecued. Goat rather than a barbecued dog. Yes, and uh, the the story in Vanity Fair was that he told his friends that he was in Asia and he was uh, eating okay. a dog, and so so many racial overtones. So, uh, and then yesterday, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and you would think that people could turn to him because he's an alternate to these two candidates, uh, like people turn to Jesse Ventura because he's an independent candidate. But yesterday he posted that if he is elected president. He will not take sides in the debate over 9-11. Yeah, I've heard that one. Yeah. Uh, not going to take sides. So there apparently are two sides, are both to, sides the, to it. That's correct. It wasn't just terrorists flying planes into the tower. Something else happened. Several of those buildings were detonated. And he's going to release all the records. So, you know, I don't know. This is crazy. This uh, is all crazy. Look at our choices. Let's uh, wrap up with um, personal news in your case. Mm -hmm. Your mother just celebrated a remarkable milestone last week. Thank you for mentioning. Thank you very much for bringing it up. And that is? Uh, my mother turned 100 years old over the weekend. Who born that? July 20, 1924, 100 years old. We had a big party. We got 13 kids. Had a big party with all the spouses, with all the kids and grandkids and great grandkids. You know, there's more than 100 people there. It was unbelievable. Well, so one of course, for every year of her life. Yeah, uh, pretty, pretty. Hundred years old, and she crazy. looks unbelievable. Yeah, I showed you the picture. I mean, she and she's, she's. Uh, I, I gave a speech, of course. I emceed, of course. Well, you have to. And uh, she looks beautiful. She looks radiant. Uh, check out my Twitter, and you can. I, I posted a picture of her, and uh, I said, you know, you're. It's it's just amazing. You're a hundred years old, mother, and you know what? We love you so much. You're just a few years older than Joe Biden. <laughs> It's it's unbelievable. Did people chuckle. You know, oh, they laugh. You got a big laugh on oh, that. Oh, got one? a big laugh, and uh, you know, and you're doing great, mom. Yeah. And I said, and you're you're still more coherent than Donald Trump. Oh, people laugh. They oh, love that. Oh, they laugh. Can't get you enough know, of that. Very yeah. political. But yeah. thank you so much for mentioning that. Yeah, she's uh, good. We're planning for a 101. It's wonderful. Now. Why wouldn't you at this yeah, point? You know, uh, we're getting some reports, Garzi, of massive uh, backups. Terminal One, MSP, yeah. and reports suggesting that. There was an un the unattended bag that that uh, that a that a TSA dog might have responded poorly to or well to depending on how you want to look at it regarding perhaps something suspicious being in the bag and that is the reason that we've got this massive back uh, backlog traffic. Um, do Both we know directions anything more about no that? that that's what I know exactly yeah. what you just said that. There's something going on that was discovered or uncovered mm -hmm. that they're continuing to check out, and nobody can get in or out of the airport it's, right I, now. That's Terminal great. 1 is I on mean, lockdown, apparently, I mean, come at on. this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. So, well, I'm, I'm sure wow. there'll be more details to come, probably uh, after we're off the air today. But um, if you're headed to the airport... Or even driving on those roads. <sighs> you're not going to make it. Yeah, because the, the backups I've seen, are they are officially ridiculous. This has been going on for about half an hour, that maybe long, a little bit yeah, longer. Yeah. yeah. So lockdown means you ain't going to be able to get in there, obviously. And now you've got the backup in terms of traffic to even give yourself a chance to get to a parking ramp if that's what you're looking to do or to, or to pick somebody up. Do we know when they lock down a terminal? The assumption is the people who are already in the terminal, then they get they have to evacuate yeah. to a certain spot. No, that, that's a whole different thing. If you yeah. lock down a terminal, you can't go in or so out. So you can't go in or out. No, because I've, I've covered a number of those okay. uh, in the past, and uh, no, I mean everybody's locked in place it, because there is an incident then mm -hmm. that they need to figure out, and so you could have if there is a perpetrator of some horrible act, that person could get out, right? And right. you don't want people yeah. to get in or out. So that's where it is. Uh, thank you. Good to have you back. Thank good you so you. much. Yeah, it's we'll, good to be back. Uh, we'll chat next week, see where we are. So the convention starts Monday. 
the Republican convention. Yeah, the Republican. So let's uh, can so we check next- in with uh, can we check in with Chad Abbott to see if we could maybe take the KFAN <laughs> iHeart bus down there. I like your, I like your chances more for the Democratic convention because it has a chance to be juicier. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's especially if it's an open convention, mm-hmm. but we'll see what we can do. Plus, again, like I said, for you, it's emotional because of the <laughs> you know your, your recollections about what took place in the '68 convention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, talk to all my friends there. You know, all. Now, I'm pretty sure Rosenbaum was there for part of that convention. Uh, he absolutely was. was. Yeah, uh, he was, and was involved then after that in the uh, anti-war movement mm-hmm. and a, a lot of uh, good Minnesota people and. I, I've spoken with many of uh, Hubert Humphrey's people. He ended up becoming, yes. after after uh, Linda Johnson drops out, Vice President uh, Hubert Humphrey becomes the nominee. Uh, they had a nominating process. Uh, some got murdered. Some never made it. It was an unbelievable year. But how did that work out uh, when the president drops out and the vice president takes it? So that's what some... Not well. Is history going to repeat itself with Kamala Close Harris, race. who might be the best candidate, yeah. you know? It was a close race. But yeah, of, of might be the best candidate. Yeah, HHH didn't make it. All right, thank you. All right. That is uh, Pat Kessler. We'll come back, wrap up the program. If we get any new information about what's going on at the airport, we will pass it along. Yeah. Nothing defines Minnesota quite like it's 10,000 lakes, and we need to help keep them beautiful. So post on social media using the hashtag Choose Chill. Help Coors Light, KFAN, and Conservation Minnesota protect the lakes, rivers, and waters we love. Show wrap brought to you by American Pressure, commercial-grade pressure washers since 1975. It's the Bumper to Bumper Show Wrap. Looks like your Twins Club ain't going to go down easy. In fact, last check, they have uh, overtaken the White Sox in the nightcap of the, the straight doubleheader. Twins leading 3-2. to two. Heading to the top of nine. We were down 2 0 in we this were. game. And we are now up 3 2 after having lost the opener 3 to 1 today. Nobody wants to be the team that gets swept in a doubleheader by the worst team in baseball, the Chicago White Sox. Jeffers had a single to left, which scored Buxton to take the lead 3 2. The Twins tied the game. On a pair of sixth inning dongs, I believe back to back, Carlos Correa tied it, and Brooks Lee got the scoring going with okay. a home run. Here's your nugget, Dan. Off of one of his best friends and former college teammate, and I think roommate, who was pitching for the Chicago Whoa. White Sox today, that would be Drew Thorpe. Nice. So there you go. We'll have a chance to review all of it uh, tomorrow. If you want to review the show, uh, what you missed from earlier in the program, Good conversation with uh, Ball9.com baseball historian and, you know, all-around agitator Kevin Kernan. He joined at 3.30 to talk about a Babe Ruth milestone that probably should get a little bit more attention. Coming up this Saturday, it's the 90th anniversary of Babe Ruth hitting the 700 career home run threshold. There have only been four, I believe, in the history of baseball that are at that number. And uh, he was the first, and more impressively, he was lapping the field at the time. So that and some other subjects with uh, Kernan took place at 3.30 this afternoon. Kessler on um, all sorts of things, largely what's going on with the uh, with the Democrats at this point. Um, I, I got, like, uh, several of these uh, texts that I just... I guess I just don't understand where people don't uh, understand. And it's basically, um, hey, um, you know, it's great. You guys spent all this time on Biden. When are you guys going to spend more time on Donald Trump's lies? And I just, this has become a very popular rejoinder the last several days. And I just shake my head and I say, don't re- don't parrot that attempted comeback because you've heard it around the water cooler and you think it's effective and think it's smart. Because we have done nothing but that week after week, month after month, year after year. For like eight years so, now. So, yeah, I mean, the, the notion that well, they're letting Trump get away with murder here is never anything about holding him accountable. It's just so moronic. And it flies in the face of especially when you're talking about mainstream media, an endless array of stories, special sections, entire 
hell, Atlantic, the Atlantic.com devoted an entire issue of the magazine to this. So grow up and, and stop pretending that this particular point, because the Democrats are basically rebelling against Joe Biden. It's a story that absolutely needs to be covered. Now, there's some media vulnerability. We've talked about it relating to whether this got buried too much too easily. But the idea that, man, there's just nothing on Trump. In fact, that's part of the reason I think a lot of Democrats feel like the change has to be made. Although, as I said before, there ain't no guarantee that whoever you end up picking is automatically going to be the uh, winner. Tomorrow is Thursday. Dr. Dan's inbox will return. Uh, send your submissions now if you'd like to get in on the fun early. JG at KFN.com. Prepare for Fan On Demand. That's coming up next. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 3 o'clock.